Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our first uh, week of the Premier League and it's our first preview show of the year, Paul. Yeah, I think everyone's waiting all summer for this video now, really, to be honest. Yeah, we've done a lot of talking about transfers and the end of the season last year and everything like that, but now we get to talk about some actual yeah. football. But before we do, if anyone else wants to come over any more transfer videos of the ones that we haven't done, we're only going to cover the ones that people actually want to come in for because otherwise we'll just waste that time. Just wanted to get that out there. Yeah, pretty much. We feel like if we put out videos of just us two talking about... Clubs know, that we don't watch. The scum or whatever. Um, Legend though. <laughs> no, and, you know, not many people are going to watch it, but if we can get a Southampton fan on or whatever, great. Yeah. Um, so if any of you are fans of clubs we haven't done yet, please get in contact with us and we will do videos on you in that case. Yeah. Um, but we'll kick off then and we'll start... I'm gonna go through. We're gonna go through the games first, and then there's just a couple of little predictions we're gonna do. So we'll start with Friday night. We'll start with Arsenal versus Leicester. Obviously, Arsenal in a little bit of turmoil with everything with Sanchez and everything like that over the summer. But I've made a couple of signings in Lacazette and Kalasnac. Leicester obviously signed at Bora, Ian Acho. A couple of really really positive signings for them, but there's obviously rumors over the future Riyad Mahrez and everything like that. So. How do you kind of, what would you predict for Friday um, with that? An Arsenal win. I don't know, every time Arsenal seemed to play less, even when they were winning the league, Arsenal always got the better of them. They just know how to play against them. I would lean towards Arsenal as well, but I'm going to go for a draw. I think Ian Acho is an unbelievable sign. It may be the best sign of the summer that any club has made. Still has the best goals to game ratio for any player in the Premier yeah. League. He's just not brilliant history. for me. He needs, I'll give him a season before I, I, I start rating um, um, especially against an Arsenal team who are always kind of there thereabouts I know they had a bit yeah. of a poor season last year but against a solid enough defence he did score some goals but they were never against a great calibre of team um, and then the one big question around this is Alexis Sanchez involved at all he hasn't really done any pre-season yeah. yet but he's still at the club do you think he'll be on the bench at least yeah Yeah. I'd did he say not come on the other day against Chelsea I came on, no he didn't come on against Chelsea at all no he wasn't even in the squad <laughs> it was all blurty on Sunday, was it? Yeah. So what uh, happens when you go outside the for? Um yeah, well I'll lean towards a draw then and you're going with an Arsenal win. Um I'm gonna say two one. I got two all. I think it'll be a high scoring game, I don't think either of these teams cover themselves yeah. in glory defensively. I think Sanchez will be involved. I mean he said he he's staying, so um he he's he's got the power in his hands there. Whether he plays well that's a different thing, but um, I think he'll be involved. Yeah. Well, then the early game on Saturday sees Watford against Liverpool. Liverpool have fared particularly well against Watford since they came back to the Premier League a couple of years ago. Um, Watford are under new management in Marco Silva. They've made some promising enough signings and guys he knows how to beat and everything. Um, what would you go for in this? I'm going to say Liverpool win, but Marco Silva did beat Liverpool with Hull last year. So, he doesn't know how to play against them, I would argue that. Uh, it depends. Um, if their new signings turn up, if Salah's on four, um be interested to see if Solanke comes, uh, starts or if he does something coming off the bench. Yeah. Uh, Watford just signed Gray from Burnley there. Today. Yeah, That's so it'd be interesting there, to see yeah. if he plays as well. That was a record signing as well. So, be an interesting game. I'm going to say a Liverpool win. What about you? I'm going to go with a, I'm gonna go with a Watford win in this. Um... I feel like this Liverpool team is good and the new signings are going to be promising for them um, and that they will have a good season. I just think Watford, under Silva, first game, we've seen it with Hull last season, early on in his tenure with Hull, that they were very hard to beat, especially at home. Mm. Um, and the full house at Vicarage Road and everything, first game of the season, new manager, new hope, new signings, everything like that. I think Watford will just sneak this one. That doesn't mean I think Liverpool will have a bad season. I just think Watford will sneak this one at home. Yeah, I'm gonna go with a two-one win for Liverpool. I don't know what it is, but two. One. Oh, three-one. I think I got one nil Watford. I think we're gonna see Liverpool's kind of front three, front four struggle the first couple of weeks as they just gel together. But when it does come together, they will be frightening. Um, then Saturday is three o'clock kickoff. So we've got five of them, which I think is good to see. I do like a good three o'clock kickoff on the Saturday, even though they're not on TV. And there'll be one on Sky Sports. Yeah, because we're in Ireland. There we go. Um, we'll start then with newly promoted Huddersfield and they travel to Palace. Obviously, Palace under new 
Stuart Chippen, um, Frank De Boer and everything like that. How do we see this one going? Huddersfield have made, what, 12 signings now this summer. They have a lot of new faces in the door, first season in the Premier League. What's the outlook for them early on in the season? And Palace, who I don't think are quite happy with their transfer business so far. I think it's gone a little bit slower than the borough would have wanted. Um, I think Huddersfield are going to struggle, no matter what way you look at it. They kind of remind me of Middlesbrough from last year coming up, and they got a lot of signings. Yeah. And then after Christmas, seems to struggle. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I, I, as far as Palace, Nate, Nate will will cru- crucify me if I go against uh, Palace. So uh, Nate, if you're watching, but you more than likely are, I'm gonna have to back Palace for this one. I think Palace are, are even he said himself, they're gonna finish bottom half of the table, but yeah. the higher end. Um, I think they'll dip in and out of games. The game itself, I'm gonna go for Palace win one 0 I'm gonna go the other way again. I don't think you agree, yeah. Um, on a game, I think I will Huddersfield. You just I actually, like to be controversial. No, I like the business. <laughs> I really like the business Huddersfield have done this summer. I like some of the players that they actually have at the club at the minute. Chris Lowe at left back, Heffale at centre half. I'm actually was really impressed with last year in the championship. Um, guy who they will have Zinka on the back of his shirt, but um, Matthias Jorgensen who they signed from Copenhagen. He's an outstanding defender. Has been brilliant at international level for years now. And yeah. Has probably left two years later than he should have from Copenhagen. He's a player who's definitely Premier League ready, and I think Steve Mounier is going to be a bit of a surprise for people as well up front. Um, score he has scored goals for the last three or four seasons now. Um, comes to the Premier League and no one really expects much of him. So I'm not going to actually. I'm a pains to predict the Huddersfield win because I don't know how quickly the team's going to bed together. Well, you have so, to do something. I'll go 1-0 Huddersfield again. I'm going to go with okay, another 1-0 so win. 1-0 for me, for Palace. Um, then West Brom and Bournemouth. Um, West Brom, <laughs> what a game. <laughs> um, just spells draw. Macaulay and Evans obviously missing the start two, of the two. season. I'm calling it, yeah. Macaulay and Evans are missing the start of the season for West Brom. Uh, Bournemouth, obviously, the foul and stuff come in. Ake Begovic. You're going to go with 2-2? Two, two? Yeah. I'm going to go 2-0 Bournemouth. I think this might be a season West Brom struggle a little bit. Yeah, I don't think so. I think they'll, just, pure, pure they'll, they'll do worse safe, than last. But... They'll do worse than last year. Yeah, but they're not going to do. Yeah, if you're if you're talking in that sort of sense, I'd like to see McKinnon leave them. To be honest. Yeah, so would I from an Irish point of view. I'd yeah. like to see him go and play, even if it's a league below. Um, no way. Go and play every week. A league below? No, you can just join some, someone else in the Premier League. But is there much difference to a team at the bottom? You know, the bottom end of the Premier League fighting relegation to they, they finish ninth. Yeah, but I, that's what I'm kind of saying with West Brom, that I don't think they're going to be anywhere near that this year. I think West Brom could be a lot lower down the league. I think Pulis will keep them up, but I don't think playing under Tony Pulis is great for attacking players on a whole anyway. Mm, yeah, true, but sure. You can see yourself when he plays for Ireland, he just goes with that level. Yeah. I'm going to go with 2-2. Two, two. Okay, um, I, I don't think either side are great. I'm gonna go. Bournemouth might have the better signs. But. Yeah, I'm going to go 2-0 Bournemouth. I think just Macaulay and Evans being out for West Brom and Bournemouth firepower will probably be a little bit too much. Um, then Southampton versus Swansea. Swansea. Al- it's a game of goals, isn't it? Yeah. Swansea, obviously, a couple of new signs in. Rocky Mesa, I think, is a great signer from Las Palmas for them. Don't know what's happening with Sigurdsson. Um, Tammy Abraham scored a lot of goals for Bristol City last season. And um, Southampton, they signed Mario Lamina for £18 million today. Uh, Jan Bednarek from Lech Poznan, but then at the same time, same situation with Van Dijk as Swansea have with Sigurdsson, kind of the key player for both those teams, won't be involved on Saturday. Yeah. Um, yeah. The to- obviously talks broke down between um, Sigurdsson, or Swansea and Everton, over Sigurdsson. Van Dijk looks like he wants to go to Liverpool. Yeah, I mean, take the two out of the equation. Um, I don't know. We'll go. I'm going to go one all. Not playing it safe. I just don't yeah. see one uh, at this early in the season. I just don't see either team kind of going off broke. I think they'd be happy with a point first game of the season, avoiding a loss. Yeah, you know what I mean, I'm actually going to go against all my heart and go with my head and I'm going to go with a 2-0 win for Southampton I um, think they're a better side than Swansea all around mm. I like some of Swansea's new players but 
Abraham's going to take time to adjust to the Premier League and the pace of it coming from the Championship. And I don't think he's going to score goals out of the gate. I think they have a link with Wilfred, Bo- Wilfred Bonny. I just want him to come back so they can sing that song. Come on, Wilfred Bonny. Score some goals for Swansea. Um, Did you ever see that video? Yes, I have. <laughs> he's a legend. <laughs> Uh, then quickly we'll go on to Chelsea and Burnley champions starting off at home. Three 0 Chelsea. Yeah, I I don't think there's much to be said on this. Burnley obviously have lost. Actually Michael. no, three one. Brady just got. Burnley have lost Michael Keane and they've lost Andre Gray. I mean they can't score a goal. Yeah, but I think they're a much worse off team than they were last year. I'm gonna go five. <laughs> all their defensive midfielders. I'm, I'm gonna go five 0 Chelsea. I think this is gonna be Conte giving a big. Basically, a big fuck you to everyone who thinks the Chelsea are going to struggle this year. Um, that they are genuinely still a very good side. Uh, uh, well, look, maybe I'm being a bit generous because my, my Irish side yeah. and I want to see the lads do well. Walters is going to be playing for them as well. Yeah. Um, oh, I want Burnley to do well, but it doesn't make I don't see 5 now. I think 5 now has been a bit harsh. I don't know. I think just Chelsea at home and all the criticism they've got over the summer. Um, I think they'll come out and try and make a statement. 3 1. Uh, Chelsea. Okay, I'm going to go 5 0. So we're back on Chelsea. We'll move on then to your favourite game of the weekend. All this, you know, buzz around Everton and, you know, they're 40 to 1 to win the league title if you believe Paul's hype. Uh, <laughs> well, I never said they win the league. Yeah, I know, but you're just, you're very high on Everton this summer. A lot well, it's the first time we bought, like, without having to, well, we've obviously sold. But at the same time, it's it's the first time we brought in like high profile signings. You know what I mean? It's like when Man City bought Robinho that year. You know what I mean? But we're off to get a collection of players. Yeah. And improved that squad greatly. I mean, yeah. we got rid of one, but we brought in about six. Well, the big question is with this. Obviously, Stoke. I think I'll, I think most people would agree with the fact that Stoke are going to struggle this year. Well, I thought that right, and then they're getting Bruno's Martin, Martins in the end. We have to get super promoting. Can I just point out they're getting Bruno Martins Indy in? So the fellow who commented saying oh, that Bruno, Bruno. yeah, the Bruno Martins Indy was going to Palace. He's not going to Palace. He was always going to Stoke, and I told you he was going to Stoke. So don't criticise me again when it's not right. The <laughs> <laughs> salmon has spoken. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I going to say? The yeah, they got super promoting off Schalke, who's a very good player. Yeah. And I think he might score. Uh, a lot of players making their debut love to score against Everton. So yeah. I do think that they'll score against us. I, I I just don't see I just don't see us losing. Yeah. I think it's important for us to get off um with a win off the mark with a win. We have to get off the mark with a win. But I could potentially see it being one all. My thing with Everton is um as much as you've signed lots of good players and lots of players that I'm actually delighted to see taking that next step especially David Klassen above any of the rest of them and mm. um, for him to come in and make that step up to that next level playing in you know obviously got to the Europa League final with Ajax last year but playing at a captain yeah at a higher level consistently um, I'm really excited to see how he gets on um, I think he was the right guy for him well. I'm going to go with nil all because I think Stoke are decent at the back and I think it's going to take Everton a few weeks to figure out how to score goals without Romelu Lukaku against these sorts of teams so it's a fly yeah um, I think Everton I think gonna Sandro's going to score he scored against Sevilla the other day he's got off the mark now at Goodison um, I think it's going to took him 30 seconds as well pretty much ever since David Nugent scored 9 goals in pre-season when he signed for Portsmouth and then couldn't score a goal in the league for the first 2 seasons he was at the club I don't buy into pre-season goals anymore so well, um, that's fair yeah I'm going to go with Salah are you watching <laughs> I'm going to go nil all for um, that reason alone I think Stoke are still all right at the back. They've made a couple. Of, I think Darren Fletcher is a really underrated signing for Stoke as well. Yeah. Um, because he's just bags of experience and just uh, such a winner mentality. Well, he's at the ship and wheeling out. He was such a fan's favourite. Yeah. So that kind of goes to show how good he is. I I'm going to go for a two one Everton win. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was a one all draw. Yeah. Um. Then Brighton and Manchester City the half five kick off on Saturday. Brighton's first ever game in the Premier League at home at the Amex against this new look Manchester City who are going to play with eight full backs and three attacking midfielders. And I just think City have too much quality not to win this game like 4 now. They've got Bernardo Silva, they've got Leroy Sané, they've got De Bruyne, they've got Gabriel Jesus, Aguero. Kyle Walker and Danilo in as well. Mendy. 
I now mean, Mendy's not going to play the first couple of weeks, apparently. He's still coming back from the injury. Who's the hell's playing left back? Is Colorado gone as well? Uh, Danilo will probably play at left back. Okay. They'll probably just shift across. He can play both sides. Yeah. Well, so. um, yeah, I still I still see City. They have so much firepower yeah. that I just don't see them not banging in a good few goals to yeah. kind of set their mark off a bit, like you were saying about Chelsea. Yeah. I just don't see Brighton doing anything. Like, I know they got a good result against Atletico. Well, for, like for me, as I said when we talked about Brighton, that there's only one player that they've brought in and one player in their squad that I even think is really of a quality where you can really Gross. press in the Premier League, and that's Pascal Gross. Like yeah. he just and he's been banging them in during preseason. Yeah, banging them in, and he creates so many chances that I think Brighton are going to score goals just off the back of the chances he creates. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with four one City. I you give him Brighton goal. I think Brighton will score. Gross. I think Grouse will grab one lay. I hope for my fantasy team, Grouse gets one lay. Also on fantasy team, um, go onto our Facebook page and we might actually leave the code in the description below in this video as well. Um, go join the league. We'll throw in a prize at the end of the season. We've no idea what it is yet. And every week on our preview show, we'll shout out whoever was. Um, we'll have you right here. Yeah, we'll have you on the screen. Whoever got the most points the week before. So we'll keep it running and make it, you know, a bit more interactive for people as well, um, with their fancy team. Yeah. Don't you know, be afraid to comment as well. Yeah, and give a stick if our teams are doing bad. <laughs> You're welcome. Um. Yeah. So I'm gonna go four on city. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm not far away from that myself. Yeah. Uh, Newcastle and Spurs then early game on Sunday. I think I will just point out that the last time Newcastle played Spurs in the league, six it was six one to Newcastle on the final day of the season two years ago. Bizarre result. Yeah. Um, that was in Sissoko. <laughs> um, I think to... I think Newcastle could upset uh, Spurs a bit. I genuinely think they do. I don't think they'll win, but There's I think I think they could get a score a couple of goals and shock them. In the newspaper up in Newcastle, in the local newspaper up in Newcastle today, as we record that one yesterday as well, they've reported it the last two days. They keep saying there's a chance that Rafa Benitez might not even be in the dugout come Sunday. That he's that pissed off with their lack of signings and lack of movement in the transfer market that he is genuinely thinking about walking. And even if he's not, having all of that in the press the week leading up to your first Premier League game back with when you look at that Newcastle side a lot of lads who don't have a lot of Premier League experience um, will that shake them up kind of going into such a big game against a Spurs side who yes haven't made signings but at the same time will still be very much a settled side coming into the season because they've all been there now for the last couple of years together I don't know I haven't seen Spurs kick a ball this summer I haven't been following them I've seen one of their pre-season games and they didn't look that great. I've seen the one where Trippier got injured. Yeah. Um, that's the one big question mark. I think Carl Walker-Peters will probably start a right back for them, which is a big gamble. He's a really promising player from everything we've seen of him, you know, with England at the Under-20s World Cup and stuff. Or the Under-20s World Cup or the Under-21s? One or the other. He was, I'm not sure. He was in one of the tournaments England did well in the summer anyway. Um, but he looked promising in that, but the Premier League's a big step up from that. Yeah, of course, you're looking at most of the Everton youngsters. They, yeah. they struggled to get into the team except for um, Cavalier. Yeah, I'm going to go with 2 0 Spurs. I'm probably going to go for a Spurs win, but I just do think that maybe they might take the lead. Yeah. Um, and then Spurs to come back from, from uh, a goal down to win. Okay. I will go 2 1 Spurs. Then we'll go to the final game of the weekend, and that's Manchester United kicking off their season at home to West Ham. Um, obviously, Lukaku has come in, Lindelof's come in, Matic has come in for them as well. Baller. West Ham with Hernandez, Arnautovic. Where do we see this one going? United struggled to put teams like this away last season. I think, well, Lukaku, if you're a betting man, Lukaku loves a goal against West Ham. I think the only yeah. he didn't score against them once, and that was the last time he played them. Yeah. After he refused to sign the contract, and his head was elsewhere. Then he loves a goal against West Ham. He'll probably break his duck against them. Yeah. Uh, and then as far as the game, I still don't think West Ham are that good elsewhere. They made Arnautovic. He has a good good game every once in a while. Yeah, I know you don't think so, but I do. Um, Hernandez, great player, great signing. He might score, 
My only worry with Hernandez is he only scored 12 goals last season. I know Leverkusen struggled for a lot last season in the Bundesliga, but he was still being set up for chances by, you know, Chalnoglu and Julian Brandt and stuff like that, yeah. who are some of the most promising players in, in Kai Havertz, even young 18-year-old they have in the wing. Bellarabi too. Like, lots of players who have considerable, you know, creative influence. Kevin Campbell as well in midfield for them. They only got 12 goals last year. Yeah. That would worry me a little bit. And I, obviously Hernandez scores goals and he's always scored goals anywhere he's gone. But is a little bit of the magic that he had gone with the maybe losing a little bit of his pace? I don't know. Uh, he he generally normally used to just get into good positions. He didn't really used to have to rely on his pace. Yeah. He's still relatively young. He must be about 28 or 29. He's nearly 30 now. He is 30 now. Is he? Yeah. Well, even still. It's, he's it's, around that age. I thought he was around 28, 29. Yeah. Whether he does anything or anything is a different story. I think he... If he gets into double figures this season for West Ham, he'd be doing well. Yeah. I think if he got West Ham 13, 14 goals this year with... We know Arnautovic for all you kind of... He only has a good game one in every five, but when he does, he tends to get a couple of goals like... And, be really influential. You can see him chipping in with maybe ten goals as well, with just little spurts of excellence that he has in games. Mm, and right. if the two of them had those sort of goals, that's what West Ham missed last year. And obviously, they've still got Manuel Lanzini there as well, who is one of the emerging attacking players in the Premier League. I just really don't like West Ham. This is I just they think they're a huge club and they just never uh, never have been really. They had a yeah. little period briefly. Um, years and years ago, and they live off that. I just, I don't. They 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 have a good season every once in ten years, and then all of a sudden they think they're bigger than everyone else. Yeah, the score prediction then. Three one Man United. I go four one Manchester United. I think West Ham will take the lead. And then it'll be a big United fight back, and it'll be everyone is going to tip them to win the league after this weekend. After a big, he's gone very high back. with the favourites for the league. Yeah, four, five, four, four. Yeah, and he he went for a draw with Arsenal. Uh, a draw at Arsenal and Liverpool to lose. And what did you do for Everton? <laughs> uh, nil all. <laughs> well, we'll go on then. We've made our predictions for this weekend. Um, and then we're going to make our predictions for the rest of the season. Uh, we'll start, before we go into who we think are going to be champions, top four, relegated, everything like that. Um, who is the signing, and I'm going to exclude Everton from this question, who is the signing in the league that you're most looking forward to watching? Bernardo Silva. You took one away from me. <laughs> can I go for another one? Um, no, 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 you can go for another one. I have another one. I have another one. I'm going to go with Benjamin Take Mendy. the floor. There you go, Benjamin Mendy from City as well. I think he's probably the best left back in the world at the minute. Um, and I think City have actually got a steal at fifty million for him. I uh, think he's outstanding. And I think Mendy, when he comes into the side, is going to really give Guardiola what he's needed since he came into City. Uh, that extra attacking outlet, the crossing, and everything like that. And I'm also really excited to see Inacho playing for Leicester. I think he is a genuine talent who just knows where the goal is. But it's very, so Bernardo Silva for me and you want me to pick a young player yeah if you want to ok who will I go for young player I can't pick everything if you want to pick everything for the young player pick for you it. Yeah. just excited to see if he fulfills his potential this season yeah yeah I'd agree with you on that I want to I'm interested as well to see there's a lot of hype around Izzy Brown going to Brighton and the fact that he might actually be a really good signing for them on loan uh, I don't personally think he will be but could very well prove me wrong um, I think if Brighton have a couple of those lads kind of do well for them they might be okay um, Will Hughes finally making the step up and going to Watford as well Chalaba may actually finally play football and prove he's an actual footballer Loftus-Cheek and Loftus-Cheek going to Palace, Palace as well so there's a lot of kind of young players coming up who are quite exciting, especially in the kind of midfield area this season. Yeah. Um, so they need to start making their stamp on games. Yeah. So we're going to start then, and we're going to start from the bottom. <coughs> um, 
I'm going to start with the three teams that you predict will be relegated. Huddersfield, <coughs> Brighton. Who just narrowly avoided relegation? Wofford. Okay. I'm going to go. No, away. actually, no, Wofford still. Um, I'm just trying to think of who in and around that area generally every season. Swans are always down there. No, I think Paul Clements is going to keep them up. Hold on, go on. I'm sad to say the t- three teams that came up. Gonna go straight back down. Really? Yeah. You got Newcastle. Yeah. Just because of the lack, maybe the lack of the signs. I you got with Newcastle, Brighton, and Stoke as three teams who are gonna go down. Um, I like as I said. It's I controversial because like, some teams have to make some good signs, and you, yeah. you kind of don't really know. But I just think a lot of the players that took Newcastle down are still there. Yeah. Except for the likes of kind of Dwight Gale and stuff like that, but he never really caught in the Premiership. Now, Kubel proved me wrong, yeah. and I'd like to see them, see them do it. You don't want to see Newcastle become a yo-yo club, because they yeah. are, listen, for all the joking people do about Newcastle fans thinking they're a massive club, when maybe they really aren't, um, they are a big club, and they do have a massive fan base, so you'd like to see them kind of stay up. I'd only really like to see them stay up, because they've got um, Kieran Clark on the team, and I do have a few friends that are big Newcastle fans, and go mm. Ben Farley watching. Um, so I would like to see them just stay up for for their sake, but uh, it'd be hard to see them kind of staying up, you know. If they make some signings, I'd have to take them out of my prediction. But at this moment of time, as we say, I just think the squad isn't strong enough, and I don't think Benitez is going to be there past October at the very most mm. at this stage. They always just seem to be in turmoil, don't they? Yeah, I don't think he's going to be sacked or anything like that. I think he'll walk. Um, I just think the lack of signings is really just going to irritate him because he's used to managing at much bigger clubs mm. than this. The only way they stay up is if they keep Mitrovic fit. Yeah, if they keep Mitrovic and Gale fit and the two of them start to score some goals, then you might see... Newcastle fans probably think I'm being harsh but saying they're going to go down. I just can't really think of anybody else. Uh, look, down, I, look down I like, I've always liked Matt Ritchie. He's yeah, a player, player for them as well. and I've, I was impressed with reports but I was good when he left then. It's good um, for Bournemouth as well. Yeah, he's been good anywhere he's gone, really. And he you know, he gets goals, he gets assists. So you need big performances from the likes of Gale and Mitrovic and Richie and LaSalle's at the back and stuff like that. But just with the lack of signings, I don't think they're quite good enough to stay up at this point. Mm, I mean, Chelsea's hardly a world beater now, is he? Yeah, this is true. Jack Callback. Isaac Hayden might be one to watch this year. He had a really good season in the championship last year. Yeah. Um, then I'm going to go jump to the other side of it because I feel it's stupid to go Europe top four then champions. So we'll go, who do you think is going to win the league? Man City. I'm going to go with United. Not this year. I just, I feel like City are going to go really deep in the Champions League this year and I don't think United are. And I think that's going to cost City in the league. And obviously it's going to cost United in the Champions League. I, I just think don't think at the back that United are that good. Um, Lindelof doesn't look that great. Um, Lindelof looks shaky at the minute. But I think when he adjusts, he is a quality player. Um, and him, when he's alongside Bailly, will be... Yeah, but Bailly didn't play that much either last season. If he gets injured... Then Smalling, Smalling, you know. Jones, Mike, yeah. Mike Smalling. Yeah. <laughs> Smalling and Jones again. Um, and then the rest of your top four. Um, City, Chelsea, United, and then either Arsenal or Spurs. I'm going to say maybe Arsenal. I, I actually don't think Spurs are going to be up. As, I don't think Spurs or Liverpool are going to be up uh, in, the, in the top four. I'm going to go with United to win the league, obviously. City second. Chelsea in third and Arsenal in fourth. I think Wembley and everything like that, and I think Spurs just having not addressed Walker leaving or anything like that. Yeah, with Trippier being out too, that could lead to a sluggish start to the season, and I think that's going to cost them. Yeah. Um. But then the other, what one definite place for Europe? Who do you think gets fifth? If I say Everton, does that mean I'm biased? 
It's up to you. I think aim, Everton should be aiming for it. Yeah. Um, they're going to be my prediction to finish fifth. I think a solid enough season. If we get dumped out of Europe come March, I think Koeman's main focus will be go for the uh, as high as they can in the league. Yeah. And I think he'll add again in January. So I think we'll be even stronger after January. We always tend to be stronger after Christmas anyway. Um, I'm going to go with Liverpool to finish fifth. Uh, I do, I've do. i said pretty much, pretty much for the last couple of weeks that anyone I've talked to about it that I was going to go Everton. But it's kind of struck me that there might be a lack of firepower there if Sandro doesn't hit the ground running in the league. Um, and that will be my one worry with Everton. I think all around the rest of the pitch, they're grand and they're really ready to push on to the next I level. Think, I, I think, think a lot. it's just... Sandro's a risk. Sandro didn't really come off of Barcelona. He had some good performances. He had a good season at Malaga last year, but it's one season, and it's just a worry if he can do that again when he's moved country and moved style of play and well, learned the big, language and all that. Big regret for them letting him go to Bar- Malaga. So yeah. Oh no, the potential is definitely there, and I think he will score goals in the long term. It's just in I the think short he term. could be the steal of somewhere five million. You could very well be. Um, I just. I don't think the goals are going to come mainly through him. I think the goals are going to be spread around amongst the team. Just, you look at Morales, who's due a big season. You look at Klassen. You look at uh, Rooney. You look at um, Sigurdsson's probably going to sign for them as Calvin well. Lewin, Luckman. All these people are, are well able to score. I think the goals will be spread out a lot more than they were under Luke, with Lukaku. Yeah. And, you know. Even without his goals, we would have still finished where we did last season. So, yeah. And then in, just quickly, in basically just a team name and nothing else, who's going to win the FA Cup and the League Cup? United League Cup, because Mourinho always seems he to go for that cup. FA Cup, Arsenal, because they love that cup. <laughs> well, that's um, maybe me being lazy. I'm going to maybe go Chelsea FA Cup. Yeah, I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with Everton for the FA Cup. And I'd like to hope so. Yeah. Just to be out there and random for the League Cup, but it's something that I actually would genuinely believe could happen. Is uh, no, I mean, we're already out of the League Cup. <laughs> um, I can go with Wolves to win the League Cup with all the new Portuguese guys and everything like that. They look really impressive at the weekend. I think um, there's a lot like of lads trying to tenor on Wolves right now. Are they watching this? Yeah, maybe. Please don't. <laughs> Please don't. Just an out there prediction. Should be coming into you with the vet slips. Yeah. Um, anyway, we're going to leave it at that for this week. Uh, hopefully you've all enjoyed the first week of the Premier League and we'll be back. I'll let you do the subscribe thing. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll be back again um, during the week next week to do a review show and then another preview show for the second week of the season. Um, come on, even. Yeah, if you want to come on and chat about it, just leave down in the comments below or comment about it on Facebook or whatever, and we'll get you in. And Steve's going to show you where you can subscribe right now. Yeah, just right up here. Right here. Just right near James McLean's signature. Just right about there. There you go. And it'll only work on your phone before you start criticising us. Yeah, on your phone and on your laptop, it'll come up. Just hover over it. If you're watching this on a PlayStation or on a TV or something like that, it just doesn't come up. Doesn't yeah, come up. Just gonna look like YouTube. idiots, but yeah, I don't know. It's just gonna look like my hands just out there for no reason. The Jedi Master. Yeah. Um. But cheers for watching, everyone, and we'll be back again with more Premier League, and hopefully we'll throw an Air Tracy League video over the weekend. They're the start of next week. We're sorry that it hasn't been up in the last couple of weeks. It's just been quite busy, and I haven't got too many games, so I didn't feel there was much point in throwing it out, and I kind of hadn't seen enough of it. Um, but hopefully we'll get back on it and thanks for watching make sure to like share and subscribe we'll be back again soon have a good day